Um, Hello, we're going to talk about our code and uh, we're, go we're going to explain how to organize function into files, uh, maintain a consistent coding style, recognize the requirements for functions in a package, compare and contrast function in a package versus functions in a script, Use fundamental workflows to test driving and formally checking in an in development package. Yeah, the main rule that is mandatory, that's no suggestion. All the files, all our script should be in a format .r inside the R folder. And once we have all our function in that format, we need to take care about the names that we will give to the to the each file. We should avoid having one file per function, or we will have too many files, or all the files in just one file. The point is that we should divide our function by topic. In a single file, we can have the main, a main function and its supporting helpers that we can see in the title separate. Also, we can have a family of related functions like the title honest and honest functions that sometimes I use together. And you can put all of them in just one file. Or you can also have very large function with lots of documentation in a single file. Those are the main three cases that you should be aware. For small helper functions, functions that you are not expecting to, to explore, and you can save all them together in the UTS file. If hard to predict in which file a custom file, a custom list, it's time to separate your functions into more files. That's maybe our quick, our quick quality check. But even though you are not sure when you store your your source function, you can R Studio has some options to help us. You use Control dot. You can use the search, especially just for that purpose. Also, we can use. You have your cursor that like your your mouse over the name of the function, and you press F two. Uh, also, I still going to take you to the function definition. And a third one that is maybe the one I prefer. You can press Ctrl and click over the function name, and that will also uh, place you in the function definition. So yeah, with even though you are not sure where your source function lives, Studio can help you. You can turn you can return to your inner file by clicking over the black ar the black arrow. It's like a gray arrow. This arrow, and you will get it back. Or you can press Ctrl F9 and you will get to the position. To get fast with bad by a low O. Remember that we can use the depth tools low O to try out the functions on the there. The so you we you shouldn't use source or even to run the scripts in your session. You should use this to run all together. Uh, it provides an excellent ap approximation to the namespace uh, remesh of the installer package.
it looks like Kaya has a question in the chat on if those shortcuts work for only that package or other functions um, from other packages. Um, from what I know, it works with other packages as well. Um, like I have a few packages um, that I've written and I can uh, use those shortcuts to go to those functions if they're in another package as well. Cool, thanks. It looks like we might have lost on him. I don't know. Uh, I hope we get him back because I, uh, I'm not sure if I'm prepared to to speak on this chapter or not. <laughs> Um, it might also depend. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if, if it varies on on what you get um, when you use those shortcuts, depending on what those other packages are. Um, but I know it's. Uh, I know it's possible. Yeah, I was just asking because it's it was reminding me, I think sometimes I will accidentally hit something with my finger and it pulls up like a new R script with the source code for the function. And now I'm realizing that maybe I'm hitting F2, like maybe that's what's happening. Um, and it's pulling up the source code like in a new script instead of in the file that it actually contains it in somebody else's package. But I could be wrong. I have to play around with that. Yeah, that, that would be surprising um, if you didn't know about the shortcut and suddenly see <laughs> source code. I'm gonna... I think we lost Angel, so I don't know if he's gonna come back. Yeah, that's what or not. That's what I was wondering. I can um I'll I'll DM him on Slack and then if not, um I can uh try to take over from where we left off. Maybe it was like an internet issue. Yeah, I'll give him a moment to see. Uh, yeah, maybe his internet just kicked off. Um, I'll go ahead and bring up the notes and then uh, see if we can go from where, where he uh, left off. Um, any questions so far? I know like a couple people came in like a minute later. So I have a question. I think that's what he was about to start talking about. So I'm very new to packages. So like my understanding of this is less than basic, but so he was going to start talking about Styler and how to use the Styler package to, um, to essentially fix or um yeah fix in the functions i suppose um so i don't know how that works so do you because some of the functions were like for example let me see some of them um styler style package and things like, like that so do you run that in the console so that it would run them it would check like either a file in a directory or it depends on which one do you use right so you run that in the in the con um my understanding so i was a little thrown off by that too um my understanding is that it runs on the whatever your like selected file or packages like if you have a file open i think i'm guessing that would be the default that style file function would run on and then the same with the package. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, the style package 
function seemed scary because it sounded like it does the whole thing at once. <laughs> and that, that would be like a lot of, uh, that could potentially be a lot of uh, changes. Um, I'm not sure if yeah, anyone. You is... don't, you don't necessarily know, right? What changes happen? I just I haven't used it, so I was wondering if someone that has used that had used it before. Um, um, I've I don't used. Know, I any thoughts on that, but it's okay. I've used other like style packages and. Instead, of, I'm not, I don't think it was Styler, but instead of making changes, it tells you what's wrong and you can go like line by line and make those adjustments yourself. Um, so I'm not sure if Styler functions the same way. Oh, cool. Here we go. Yeah, uh, this, this, this is Tasa. I have not been able to get much of the mileage out of Styler, but maybe I wasn't using this right. So... It would make very minor changes in the code rather than, you know, produce a wonderful, nicely formatted everything. Um, that's, I've tried it a couple of times and kind of given up. No. Perfect. Hello, uh, sorry, I'm back. Was having problems with my electricity, but I want to continue the presentation. No, this is no problem. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice well, welcome back. Okay, as I was explaining, the second step that you need to apply is to style our code. We could follow the tidyverse style guide and also use the styler package. Uh, you have several options to apply a style at different level. You can apply a style for the whole package of a specific directory or a specific file or even some test. Uh, make sure that you are using a version control system like Git to, to make sure that you don't you don't lose your work in the sense that the the package doesn't follow or doesn't work as you expect. So one of the, the trickiest part of creating a package is to understand when the code gets executed. Uh, most of the time, the code gets executed for a particular variable when it's built. And most of the time, it's built by Chrome. So it is the workflow that most of the people follow. They say, hey, is that dot .package? You download the binary file from, from Chrome, and then you install that, that package in your computer, and then you load it to memory. So we need to be careful. Uh, to pay special attention to every R code outside of a function. And we're going to see two, in, two very important examples. When we want to align a function, for example, we just want to provide a new name for a, for a function from another package or maybe changing the default of that function. Uh, we can we shouldn't do this just call the function in this way because uh when we go the binary part uh, we will fit that function to the version present in the machine where the binary was built so it was the problem with that if that function have any problem we will have that function with that problem until we release another binary a new version of our package but if we grab that function inside a function, just adding this step, now then the, our function will be asked and we will use the function from the package that the user has installed in their computer. So 
if they say, oh, there's a problem in this function, they can go, go ahead and start even the development version of that package and get the problem solved. But if you don't do in that way, uh, uh, the version will be uh, will be fits to the version where it was when it was uh, created the, the binary file. Uh, also, if we if you want to have a variable that change its value based on certain path, in this case we have this example. Uh, that depends on system file. It was they they using the HTML dependency, but the the key point that was that the system file change between computer and computer. You don't have the same uh, path to that folder and to my computer because that depends on your user the the your username or your computer. Also, even the the R version that you are using. So yeah, the path changes. But what happens? They create it as a list. And that have and that even pass the, the crime chat. Oh, we might have lost him again. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> um, uh, sorry, guys. I'm back. Oh. Uh, to, to, to. So, okay. Basically, in this, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Can, can you hear me? Can you confirm? Um, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah. Basically, the problem is that they were creating a list. They want to return a list, but the value was fixed when they when the ground created the binary. So to have a dynamic variable, they need I'm not sure what's going on here. Yeah, no, my, my internet right now is bad. I know that if I get this connect, I might need maybe I will confirm I, I can finish the chapter next week. No, no, not next week, maybe I, yeah, next week. If you don't have any problem. Okay, uh, we... let's see if we can finish. If okay. I don't get out one time else. Uh, the other thing that we need to I wonder if it would make any difference if we all turned off our video, but maybe that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I was wondering, um, maybe that would help, or I wonder if um, I could share my screen and then. It looks like he keeps getting kicked off though. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know if that would help at all. Um, this, oops, there it is. Oh, 
Oh, that's a good point, Rebecca. Yeah, I wonder if he could call just call in if that's possible. Let's see if we can get him back. Um, let's see. In the meantime, I had a question about the function aliasing. I've just, I've never seen that concept before. And I'm a little confused, like, why would you want to alias a function? And is this saying that this, like, function parentheses thing has to happen every time you use a function or only some of the times when you use a function? I guess I'm just a little bit lost here. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, like, I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, that's a good, like, you're asking why someone, why someone might alias a function like this? Yeah. So, I mean, am I understanding correctly that the, what they're doing is they're taking a function from some other package and they're defining it as their own variable so that they can then use a different name for it? I just like, that doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't you just define package B colon colon blah in the code that you're using? Um, Stoss says that's just bad code in my opinion. Um, and Rebecca asks, how are all the dev tool functions called that are from use this? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I. I, I was thinking the same thing, Rebecca, um, how like DevTools uses uh, other functions from different packages, but it looks like it's from a different, uh, using a different style. Um, so I'm not sure like what the benefit would be of uh, using this approach. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has other thoughts. Well, I can imagine the semi-fictional scenario when you wrote your package and you're deeply in the functions and one of the functions is filter and then you discover that this function also exists in base, in this function or in stats, and this function also exists in dplyr. And then you say, well, within my package, I'll call this dplyr underscore filter and base underscore filter and i'll give those names uh, those aliases to to the to those functions but that's again that it means that your code was bad to begin with um so that's just loops back to what is good code and what's not that makes sense so just make sh just to make sure i'm understanding like this 6.4.4.2 where you have to do the function parentheses thing lest it call the old version of the function. You don't have to do that all the time, right? Like if I just want to use the blah function from package B in my code normally, I don't have to do any weird, like if there was a bug in package B and the developer fixed it, it would just get fixed, right? This is only- a Well, I, I I think that this, this, this may have been some legacy code in some packages and some you know, historically, uh, Hadley was stumbling on code like that, and he said, "Well, if you're doing, if you're trying to do that, then this is this is the proper way of doing that." Okay. With, with the full referencing rather than assigning the object, because well, the problem is that when it gets compiled, then you have you have this fixed okay. version of that object rather than a reference. Okay, fair enough. Thanks. But frankly, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, I don't, well, I don't have a convincing argument for that, <laughs> how hard I try to figure out what, what this would be useful for. Um, I'm, I'm going to click on the link that, uh, oh, there's two Stack Overflow links, um, that Rebecca sent in the chat. 
Okay, and then these, yeah, these are the answers, okay. I suppose if it's an internal package, it may not, um, have as many downfalls as if you're sharing it and you're, you're having to rely on other people to keep all the functions updated. Um, but yeah, I'm still not sure on this <laughs> and I'll go to the other link too. Oh, Hadley was answered this. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, Angel did say uh, he'd be about five minutes, but I'm not sure. Um, I asked if he was able to call in, but I haven't gotten a response yet, so. I can um, um, I can try to continue on um, unless there's other questions uh, people have. Yeah, I mean, maybe try to continue. And if you don't feel like you've prepped for this chapter, we can all just kind of collaboratively make our way through. Okay, um, cool. I was able to... Um, read through the chapter uh, today. Um, but if other people feel like they um, can add insight, definitely. Oh, and that might not be necessary. Welcome yeah. back. See, yeah. Sorry, I hope I could, I could finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I'll go ahead and share screen and then if we can get on help for, um, a longer period of time, uh, I'll have him take over. Um, let's, so I'll just go over, um, I don't think I have quite the same notes, um, Yeah, so I guess in uh, respect to um, kind of the aliasing and not having to rely on people having everything up to date um, from other packages, uh, yeah, people are going to use your packages in ways that you might not have imagined. Um, so that, that definitely opens up... Uh, a lot of possibilities for uh, where your package can go and, and what it can look like and, and what it can do. Um, so they, they suggest that um, you pay attention to the R landscape, uh, for example, not only available functions and objects, uh, but all the global settings as well. Um, yeah, I feel like we might've touched on this 
in some previous discussions, but some examples of actions that change the R landscape. Um, loading a package with library, uh, changing global options, and changing the working directory. Um, not uh, probably not recommended uh, for for package development, um, but there are some uh, ways to get around that if if you're trying to do that will accomplish like the same thing. Uh, how to know when you've changed the R land landscape. If the behavior of other functions differs before and after running your function, you've modified the landscape. Um, so I think there's um, ways to check that as well. Um, yeah, you, you definitely don't, you, you definitely want to avoid that if, if possible. Um, and one of the, I'm not sure if it's in the notes here, but uh, like one of the examples of uh, set.seed as something that can change your R landscape without you like realizing it. Um, uh, I hadn't thought of that before. And, and so that was, that was interesting that um, something like that could have an effect on a user's R landscape. Um, so, so tips to avoid doing that, um, don't use library or require, um, use the description to specify your pack packages requirements. Um, and then the use this package, um, can, uh, edit the description to, um, add packages to your imports and your, um, suggested, suggested packages as well. Um, never use source to load from a file. And then some other ones uh, that should be used with caution. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what par is, maybe like a parameter function. Um, we've got we've got message. Uh, Test, test that opens with library, test that. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And par, uh, par is the base R graphics or, oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, so op changing options, uh, changing your working directory, um, uh, environmental variables, and then, uh, your seed as well. Uh, flip side of this is that you shouldn't rely on users landscape. For example, functions that rely on sorting strings are dangerous because sort order depends on the system locale. Um, this one also, this one also surprised me uh, quite a bit. Um, and I'll go over to the book. Um, Let me see where this is. Yeah, I was, so I was surprised by this. Um, uh, the sort can be different based on, um, but based on the language locale. Um, so you might have something like uh, in French and it might sort a different way than like um uh, whatever c <laughs> means whatever whatever c um points to um but yeah i thought i thought that one was interesting as well um any other questions or anything in the chat um definitely feel free to come off mute and 
uh, ask anything or or make a statement or comment. Okay, so um, so oh, here's a chat. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Hui says uh, uh, import should be used instead of library. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you might be thinking, uh, like, maybe you haven't read the chapter. Or, like, okay, what should I do instead? Um, basically, if you have to do any of these things and change the landscape, uh, just make sure to, um, they say, clean up after yourself. Um, so you can do that by managing the state with the with R package. Um, and I think originally a lot of this was um, the on.exit function. And so the, the with R equivalent is um, defer. Uh, the general pattern is to capture the original state, um, schedule it, its eventual restoration, um, and then make the state change. Uh, for example, below where some setters like options and par return the old value when you provide a new one, allowing you to do something like this. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the with our uh, defer function right there. Um, so I think this is, fun the function is doing something X, Y, and Z, and then uh, it's capturing the old or the original state with old. And then after it's done, uh, returning that with defer, I believe. Okay. Um, defer can also be used in the global environment for developing code interactively and cleaned up with deferred uh, clear. Um, yeah, so if you are, a, a lot of package development is interactive so if you do have to uh, change settings or or anything like that um interactively that's that's how you would uh restore back to the original state okay uh on how um won't be able to make it the rest of the meeting so i'll uh try to finish up these last three sections um, the best that I can. Um, and you can also restore with uh, base on dot exit, uh, very similar to defer. Um, note that we use the add equals true argument, which adds to the list of deferred cleanup tasks rather than replace them. Okay, so I think this is, Similar. Um, yeah, this is a similar uh, setup. Um, has anyone utilized either of these? Um, the with our function or the base on dot exit? No, but this is cool to know about, and now I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, I think this is, like, both of these definitely sound uh, very useful. And I, th I think they also link to um, some of the with our documentation, too, as well. And I think that there's a lot to dive into in the with our package. Um, so definitely check that out as well. Um, so uh, another thing that we wanna do when, 
or or be aware of is to isolate side effects. Um, often you can't avoid creating side effects. Uh, for example, printing output or creating plots. Um, good practice is to isolate them in functions that only produce output. Um, for example, instead of combining them into one function, write two functions, um, one for data wrangling and one for plotting. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Stas uh, has used some with our functions um, from, from our books and Stack Overflow. Uh, and when you do need side effects, uh, so um, maybe that's something that you need in your package. Uh, most common when your package talks to an external system um, outside of R, uh, you may need to display a message when your package loads, set custom options for your package with options. Um, and then they suggest use uh, the onload and on attach functions, um, mostly on attach. And then on unload to clean up any side effects. Um, Stas is working on a package that reads external dot any files. So it looks like I will put these into dot onload. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely sometimes when you want side effects, but, um, yeah, be mostly be aware, uh, of their effects and, and limiting them. Um, so I think we might've gone over this a little bit when we went over, um, the whole game. And that's kind of the process of um, what you're doing when when developing a package. Um, and this is like a, a constant circle. Um, so you go into your package, um, uh, you edit um, a file, an R file, um, maybe you edit more and then uh, you document document it. Um, if you made any changes that impact help files or namespace, um, load all to make those changes. Uh, then you have the new updated code so you can run those interactively. Um, and then when that looks good, you want to test and uh, check that as well. So experienced developers cycle through these steps several times in an hour or a day. It's good to have um, feedback so um, you can make changes quickly or in, and adapt if necessary. Um, lack of comfort with these steps often leads to a dysfunctional workflow that is run infrequently. Uh, so maybe like once every month or every two months. And so that just makes it more difficult to find bugs. Um, I'd say two and a half. Write a unit test for the code you just added. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, is that, yeah, I guess that, I guess testing doesn't cover that. That just runs the test. So yeah, definitely good point um, to make sure you're writing the unit test for uh, step five as well. 
Um, so uh, experienced developers go through this cycle um, several times and, and often in a short amount of time. Uh, the otherwise a dysfunctional workflow looks like um, you edit uh, multiple files in R, build, install, use the package, uh, only iterate occasionally with uh, the previous step, um, write documentation once the code is done, uh, write tests once the code is done in quotations, uh, and then run R command check right before submitting to CRAN or releasing in some other way. Um, yeah, so there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some pitfalls to the second, uh, workflow. Um, if you're, um, waiting to document and write tests, um, until everything is finished, you're either never going to get to those steps or once you do get to those steps, um, that's when you'll find the errors and uh, uh, you'll wish you have, you'll wish you had gone through the first um, workflow instead. Um, so the value of fast feedback also applies to running document, test, and check. Uh, there are problems that can't be detected from using load all and running a few interactive examples. Finding and fixing bugs right after they were created, it's much easier than troubleshooting them weeks or even months after you touch the code. Um, so yeah, just definitely something to... Um, think about with, with your own coding style. Um, and it always helps to, um, iterate faster, even if you're not necessarily, um, going through these iterations several times in an hour. It definitely helps with some improvement versus, um, the far other spec far other end of the spectrum uh, and waiting to do that until the very end. Okay. Uh, just some short notes on CRAN, I think, um, when submitting to CRAN. Um, you must only use ASCII characters in your .r files. So digits, um, uh, A through Z, um, so any alphanumeric punctuation and then common punctuation as well. Okay, all right, thanks, Stas. Uh, if you need to use a Unicode character, you can specify it in the special Unicode escape format. Um, so both of these are bullets. Um, yeah, if you're submitting to CRAN, uh, that's the format it needs to be submitted in. Um, so if you are, <laughs> if anyone is submitting to CRAN, just uh, just a note. Okay, um, so that is all I had. Um, does anyone have uh, questions or comments? Um, I think I have, I have two comments. Um, we mentioned the styler, um, in R, I think it might change everything at once. Um, but something that I've used, and I'll put it in the chat here as well, is uh, Linter. Um, and it's an R package that um, basically does the same thing. It takes your code and 
uh, it, it can be a, in a package or whatever, and uh, you can set it to tidyverse style, and it will basically print out like a document and like line by line which um, things need to be um, improved on. I can share what that looks like too as well. Um, so you can run uh, lint on one of your functions and it'll go line by line and say like, here's a style comment, here's uh, a warning, and then uh, the reason for why it's giving you that message as well. Um, so yeah, that can be helpful if, um, oh, it's actually, so it's actually complementary to the styler package. That's uh, really cool. So does this, is this opinionated or do you get to make some decisions? Like for example, um, at the top, it was saying something about variable and function names should all be, should be all lowercase, but like, okay, what if you're using camel case or do you, is there a way that you can specify that that's what you're using? Yeah, um, I'm not sure specifically for like if you oh, can specify I that see. type equals like, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be whatever the tidyverse style is. Um, so you can like ignore that. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a way to do that, like programmatically or not. Um, but yeah, I think it's similar and you can, uh, lint a project, you can lint a package, uh, and it looks like Styler automatically restyles it. Linter just tells you what it thinks is wrong. Um, which I think it's safer because you know it you know it's not making changes automatically to your code um but yeah that that was the one thing i wanted to share um i'm not sure if anyone else has um other questions or comments from this week this is just highlighting for me how much i need to learn to write unit tests like i know the theory but i'm not confident enough to really do that workflow like writing the test immediately so definitely looking forward to um practicing that a bit more but yeah thanks interesting chapter yeah i think that i think the testing chapter coming up will be helpful as well um and speaking of that before i sign off um we are off next week and then the following monday as well um, we'll be back on the 8th with Kaya presenting data chapter. Uh, if you want to sign up, we have an opening for the 15th on other components. Um, if not, I will present that week as well. Um, and then, yeah, we should be good for a while after that. Um, and then, yeah, testing basics, the in February. Awesome. Cool. So take a look at that and uh, sign up if you can. Um, thanks everyone. And uh, thanks for bearing with um, the internet issues that we had earlier. Uh, enjoy your two week break and uh, have a uh, happy holidays and uh, see y'all in the new year. Thank you. Bye. Bye.